welcome back to session six that will focus on perspective taking and feelings. My name is Dr. Offenwanger and I'm one of the facilitators for the Life Tools Youth Net group. Today, what we focused on was reviewing the different tools that we learned in our previous meeting, remembering that we're vivid, knowing the parts to who we are, and knowing the parts to yourself and how that's important connected to your values. We discussed and reviewed our three good things. We talked about knowing our values through mindful awareness sharpening our senses through mindful movement, and today, as mentioned, focusing on that perspective taking and feelings. So perspective taking is the ability to see situations and events from the viewpoint of another person. When we mindfully practice perspective taking, we become more skilled at interpreting what's going on around us. Being able to increase our ability to recognize these different situations, look at situations in different views, helps us reduce conflict and kind of work together both at school, at home, and in the community with others. So today we practice an origami activity that symbolizes the building of different pathways that are in our brain through repeated practice. So repeatedly practicing perspective taking, such as practicing our other tools, will help them become habits that will be kind of lifelong and help us be successful. We also talked about how the more we folded the origami, the easier it got to put back into that shape. And that's kind of how our brain works. So again, the more we practice, a sport, we practice a skill, the easier it then becomes, and the more likely we're gonna use that one. We also discussed our core feelings. We reviewed some clips from the Inside Out movie related to sadness, anger, fear, disgust, and joy. We talked about owning our feelings by saying, I feel happy, instead of you made me feel angry. And then we rated our feelings, saying how strong that feeling is on a scale from zero, not too strong, all the way up to 10. And we practice different situations with your child owning their feelings by saying I feel and rating them on that scale of 1 to 10. We talked about how a critical part to any child dealing with their emotions is having a sense of safety with their feelings and feeling comfortable sharing their thoughts, emotions, and feelings with you. And that is part of our first feeling goal, is having a right to say all of our feelings. When a child shows an emotion or says a feeling, it is best to identify it by saying, it sounds like you're feeling sad, angry, happy, and give permission for it. You have a right to feel angry. You have a right to feel sad. You have a right to feel happy. And thanks for telling about it. I'm really glad you did that. If it's a difficult feeling that your child's expressing, also feel free to offer that support. I'm so glad you told me. I'm here to help you with this. Because oftentimes it can be a very vulnerable experience sharing our emotions with others and knowing that you're there to support them is more likely to help them share them in the future. Our mindful tryout tool this week, again, tryouts are not homework, there's no grade, it's just something for you to consider using at home for this next week and seeing if it fits for your family. What we're asking you to try out is asking you to try to go over those feeling rules, owning their feelings, rating their feelings, and encouraging them to use a different feelings chart, which are chat attached in our handout, and talking about those five, four feelings from inside out. Also, as a family, watching the video Inside Out is highly regarded by mental health professionals as a great support and resource and child-friendly way to talk about our feelings and introduce them. I included a link in the handout as well of, with a description of the movie to see if it works best for you and your family. Tryout number three, encourage your child to review what they have learned about perspective taking. Engage in a discussion about a situation that occurred or may occur. Think about the different people's emotions. Think about the different ways it could be solved. Focusing particularly on that perspective of someone else and how that can play a role. Or also using a recent family example may be helpful to facilitate communication and reduce any conflicts that may be going on. Lastly, keep doing those three good things. Review them at the end of the day with your child and help them notice that they are amazing. They have great skills, they have great strengths, and that you're noticing them as well.